Welcome to the podcast of Terra. So good morning. Thank you very much for being here in one new episode of the podcast. I have today Mr. Angelo Balbi, who is the Hotel Operations Director, Pandorina Hotel, for a cruise liner company, MSC. Um, Angelo, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for uh, giving some of your time. You actually, you told me you are on the cruise, actually, right? That that's your office. Back in right now, yes, we are. Uh, so, so we call it cold layup. We are um, keeping the ships uh, alive, ready to sail. Hopefully, it will happen very soon. We do the usual uh, technical uh, daily technical checks and maintenance, mm -hmm. and uh, we just you know ready to go as soon as possible. Hopefully, when things will change, hopefully very, very soon. So it's yeah. the first time I, I ever have a, a guest uh, like you coming from the cruise liner industry. So I have a lot of interest on you to share what it means, how to get there, uh, and what uh, a hotel on uh, on the on the sea means. You know, which I think a lot of people don't have that mentality that it's it can it, it is also a hotel at the end of the day, and you have yeah. it's a massive hotel with thousands of people in there, so loads and loads of rooms. So as usual, I want to start from the beginning. Uh, I was reviewing your profile, uh, checking with you earlier, and you started as a chef, which is an unusual path. I, so go, please go through it. <laughs> yes. Well, um, my I have a, a, a nice uh, uh, contamination between uh, between two my two families, the mm -hmm. the, the mother side and uh, my my father uh, my father side, and um, my father uh, family. Uh, they always have been uh, a hotelier in, in Genoa. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, I spent a lot of time uh, living, uh, living in the property. So I was actually uh, breeding and, and living uh, the hospitality since a very, a very young age. Mm -hmm. And um, my mother used to take me and keep me in the, in the kitchen with her. Uh, in my little, uh, in my little crib. <laughs> so, um, in, I think the passion actually uh, start over there. It actually passes from her DNAs to mine. And um, when I decided to, you know, to, to uh, further uh, pursue my studi studies, mm -hmm. I, I decided for, uh, for hotel school. And um, the first step uh, in my career that at that time I had already very clear in my mind mm -hmm. um, in, uh, in junior high, was to become uh, to become a chef, and um, and and that's what I did. I mean, I followed the the usual uh, uh, career path from uh, you know young junior chef up to um, to executive chef, and uh, you know the, the, let's say the peak and the highlight of my of my career of or let's say that part of my career, that sector of my career was opening uh, and the um, business uh, uh, business restaurant for the world trade center in uh, in genoa and mm -hmm. after that i decided that, you know i was i needed to do something else uh -huh. and then from the uh, kitchen you would move to front office and you were some years uh, working as a front office at the front office and then from land hotels let's say you moved to to the cruise liner industry yes yes i did uh, and there are, you know obviously there are some uh, there is a path that mm -hmm. you need uh, you need to follow and uh, experience is extremely is extremely important so um, i as i was saying before i mean i always had uh, the um, the will to 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 travel and uh, and to see different places my uh, my uncle used to come home, uh, come back from uh, from uh, you know their, their time on ships uh, because they were sea captains and they used to come up with these you know amazing stories uh, of beautiful places exotic area and so on and so forth so in my in my mind um, I, I i felt that you know the hospitality travel uh, could be could be a, a perfect marriage and and the ocean which you know i grew up in um, by the ocean in genoa and um, was the perfect the perfect solution for, for me and so um, i decided to do to to do an application uh, for a for a major cruise line at, at that time that uh, you know everybody uh, loved to see on on tv and uh, because of my background in food and beverage 
um, they decide to uh, offer me the position as a cadet, cadet food and beverage officer. And uh, since then was, uh, was an unbelievable ride. Which is over, over 20 years now. Uh, we move you from uh, different companies now. So hotel resident manager, and, and then currently uh, as your, your current role as hotel operations director. So now for the ones who, like me, who don't really know much or, or very, know very little about cruises, what does it mean? What does this having a hotel, uh, a moving hotel mean in terms of what is the difference between a ship and a land hotel? Let's put it like that. Well, let's say that I had the opportunity to experience, uh, experience both uh, realities. And uh, there are obviously things that you do on a land-based operation uh, that you don't do on, on board of a cruise line and, and vice versa. But ultimately, there is a lot of similarities, a lot of similarities. The, the, the main goal here is to make sure that uh, you, know, you, you, you give the best first impression and the best possible service uh, uh, to the guests. It doesn't matter if they're on land or they are on, uh, on, um, on a ship. Obviously, on a ship is a little bit more challenging because you actually moving from, uh, from one place to another. So uh, you're, you're transporting people. At the same time, you need to entertain them, entertain them with, uh, you know, uh, Vegas style or Broadway style uh, shows. Uh, it's also amusement, amusement park. Now, you know, the ships are so big that you can find from, you know, slides to, uh, uh, to bumping car uh, circuit around, around the vessel, hockey, 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 hockey rings. I mean, there is a lot going on on board. And there are, you have a, a huge amount of uh, um, restaurant uh, that the guests can experience. And, uh, and obviously there is also all the, all the, legisla all the, um, all the um, legislation and the administrative uh, side of, of the job that is probably slightly different from the one that you can uh, face on a land-based operation. You need to deal with, uh, with the local authorities, local, uh, local laws uh, comes to place. You are at the same time an ambassador uh, for, your, uh, for your company. So you need to have that kind of uh, um, ambassador skills in order to have a good relation and, uh, and making sure that actually uh, you can promote, uh, promote your brand. And um, you have to uh, handle and manage uh, most of the time uh, over 1,000, um, we call them crew members, mm -hmm. um, people that work for you in the hotel departments, in, obviously in, uh, in different, uh, uh, different section of the, of the hotel. So obviously we have housekeeping, we have food and beverage, we have the shops, we have the entertainment department, we have the casino, we have the spa. So there is a lot of people that obviously we are, you have head of department that you know they deal on the day day to day basis with the, with the, with their staff, but then you know the, the, everything comes down <laughs> then comes down to the funnel on uh, on your desk. So uh, throughout uh, throughout uh, um, talking, the storming section and so on and so forth, and so forth, you try to pull all the strings and making sure that uh, at the end of the story. Uh, the, the passenger will have a, a great, uh, a great time on board, and then when the cruise finish, seven days, ten days, three days, whatever is going to be the itinerary, you start all over again in uh, in eight hours, and it's not a check in or a check out of ten, one hundred people. We're talking about now three thousand, three thousand five hundred, even more. Now there are ships that are carrying more than six thousand people, so it's a huge, massive, uh, massive of operation. No, oh, it must be, it must be incredible. I mean, just the, the numbers you say, you know, like checking in up to 6,000 people, 1,000 team members, it's, it's crazy. So all those careers over 20 years, sorry, all those years, over 20 years in the, in the industry, have, do you have anyone in mind that helped you maybe at the beginning to get into the path in there? Any mentor, anyone you, you admire? Oh yeah, absolutely. My favorite person that I mm -hmm. will uh, always uh, thank, and, he, and we are still friends now, um, his name was Carlos Salcedo and mm -hmm. was a great life, uh, life teacher. You know, if you want, uh, life himself is a good, uh, is a good teacher. 
Um, this person it was a, was a um, hotel director and um, he had a, a university master degrees in law at that time. And, uh, you know, obviously he, he started cruising in a very, in a very old days. We're talking about the la, la, last century now. And uh, on those days, in order to apply to be a hotel officer, you need to add an economy degree or a law degree in order to, you know, to, to sign a contract. So uh, Carlo uh, used to um, work for Italian Cruise Line at the time uh, was probably the best cruise line on, uh, on, on the seven seas. Uh, there were beautiful ships like Raffaello, Michelangelo that at that time were a huge ship now comparing the, they're very small. <laughs> but um, in, in those days, uh, um, uh, cruise lines were, uh, I mean, ships were dividing different classes. Uh, so first class was ultra luxury service and, you know, head of states, uh, movie stars were selling regularly from United States to Europe and Italy back and forth. And it was a very uh, posh uh, lifestyle. So Carlo, after that kind of experience, he decided to move uh, to a different cruise line. And, and we met uh, on, um, you know, on those years. And I was a cadet person, actually it was during my first contract. And... Um, Carlo, every single evening, used to um, have a meeting with all the junior hotel officer in, uh, in, his, uh, in his office, and he gave us proper university level lesson in uh, hospitality uh, management. And every single month, uh, he was pretending a written test uh, so we could uh, understand if we were, you know, um, absorbing the knowledge that, you know, he was, uh, he was giving to us. And really, Carlo, he didn't have to do this at all, but he cared very much about sharing the knowledge. And, uh, you know, looking now, he really helped us a great deal professionally. Mm -hmm. But I think as well, uh, the, Carlo uh, wanted to keep us away from the, from the late night disco as well. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so the excuse was to, to force you to study for those tests, right? <laughs> we were right. young at the time, so you know. I think it was a great, a great, a great experience. Yeah. And um, Carlo had this mantra. Mm -hmm. It was something that he was trying to plant, uh, you know, the seed in our head, and he was saying all the time, "Things are always in transition." Why he was saying that? Because he was trying to make us understand that, that you know, if you are always ready to respond to chaos, then your brain will not you know, quickly uh, have a, um, um, a rush and to go to, you know, to a fight or to a, to a flight mode. But in, in reality, uh, preparing your mind in order to stay calm amid chaos and trying to find the smarter possible uh, response and, uh, and solution. Because, what, you know, working in the hospitality industry could be very stressful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I can't even imagine uh, how it is in, uh, in a ship, but that's a very good one. Things are always in transition. Nice, nice life lesson. So now you are, um, when, when you're on, on the sea, you have, you say, up to a thousand staff. So what fills your day as a uh, ship hotel manager? Well, there is a, there is a lot, uh, a lot, uh, a lot to do. Um, as I was saying before, we are, uh, we are always striving to make the, um, the, a positive first impression. Mm -hmm. And this is paramount, uh, I mean, in all the uh, hospitality industry, but I think in the industry in, uh, in general. And, um, and we need to play this uh, um, strategic, strategic role in uh, coordinate and managing literally uh, all the all the aspect of the um, of the operation so we need to, move to you know to focus and, and ensuring a high quality a consistent brand as excellent customer service and, and, and you know crucial first uh, first impression so we go uh, around uh, we are uh, talking with the with the guest uh, a lot in a in a really literally in a consistent uh, way also because we want we want to understand uh, in in the way guests perceive uh, our uh, our product and our, and our services because the best feedback uh, it, the, are when you actually you are on on the spot we don't really want to wait until the guest will write the, the you know the comment form 
or you know to have surprises so uh, trying to establish the kind of uh, you know um, relationship between um, um, hotel officer or, uh, or manager or whatever you wanted to to call it with the with the guest with a customer it, it's very important for us and also receiving the kind of feedback you give you also a different perspective that perhaps uh, you miss because after a while you get used to to a certain um, uh, you know uh, environment and sometimes you know you forget few things and uh, here and there even it shouldn't happen you know, nobody's perfect you know mm -hmm. things happen unfortunately and uh, then after that you have all the the um, PNL, the revenue, the budgeting side of things, uh, all the reporting that you need to give to the corporate office, uh, estimate the uh, occupancy uh, for the itinerary that you are going to um, explore in the next few months, and based on that, perhaps giving also guidelines about uh, uh, costs and uh, and prices. And that's what we do usually on a, on a daily basis. No, which must be, again, very challenging. You know, forecasting in advance, I'm thinking about the provisions for the ship in the coming months and, on, and trips must be very, very challenging in there. Um, a more lighter question. I mean, you've been everywhere, obviously, in, in the world, so uh, you have that, that luck. Any favorite spot, any port that you might like, any destination that you prefer when you arrive there? For me... Um... I, I loved, I mean, I still do, uh, Hawaii and uh, Polynesia are the mm -hmm. destination, are the first destination that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. Every time I think about a vacation, that's where I would like to go. <laughs> it's beautiful. Uh, you know, they, obviously the two islands, they have a very similar culture, uh, but at the same time, they are also very different. Uh, Hawaii is very Americanized with tall building mixing with the, you know, with the with beautiful landscape and, and the nature and, 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 and the culture. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, what I like most uh, that uh, in, on, on, you know, on those islands, especially for uh, the, the people that born and, and uh, raised there, the, their tradition are very important. The heritage, the heritage is very important. And it really plays a significant role uh, in uh, in both places. Um, then, obviously, I mean, I mean, I, I I like to golf. Uh, I didn't golf for two years actually, but you know, I like to golf. And there are amazing uh, golf courses, breathtaking golf courses in uh, in the islands. So you know, it's fantastic, beautiful mm -hmm. places to to spend a vacation. Hawaii and Polynesia, no taken. Uh, now you were saying <laughs> you haven't played golf for a while and, and uh, going to the current scenario, the cruise liner um, industry has been one of the worst hit because of the of the pandemic. So what is it from the inside? I mean, you work in there for that many years. What is the outlook? How does it look from your point of view? Well, let's say that the current scenario um... Is still uh, is still really in the making. It really change uh, by the day, day by day. Uh, it really depends in which geographic area are you, you know, forecasting or planning or planning to operate. Uh, there is a lot of talk between uh, cruise line owners and local uh, government about uh, cruise industry health protocol, and um, everybody everybody is trying to adapt to local rules and regulation. Uh, we have an um, uh, agency which is called CLIA, uh, where all the major uh, cruise lines uh, are, uh, are part of it, that um, made a protocol in order to cover, let's say, all, all, the, ankle, uh, all the angles, uh, making sure that, you know, uh, also with local rules and regulation, we, we're going to be okay. Obviously, for the United States, uh, um, central disease control. Uh, uh, stop uh, stop selling for uh, for month. Now it seems like uh, uh, they relieve the no sale order until the end of um, of this month. So uh, perhaps uh, a few cruise line will uh, will start uh, to uh, go back to sea and uh, start their their business with the, with a lot of restriction as well. So for most uh, small cruise line uh, taking any risk. Uh, could be commercially dangerous and, and expensive right now. So there is a handful of cruise line. They're sailing with few guests. Uh, they're basically 
at the same time uh, testing their uh, um, health protocol and, uh, and at the same time giving uh, hope to the in industry and keeping the, the dream alive. There is a huge amount of money that have been invested right now in, uh, in uh, health protocols and, and procedure and test uh, that, um, that is going on prior embarkation, during the period on board, and also uh, after the, just before the, 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 the guest uh, will disembark. So test, uh, tests are taking place here right now for passenger and crew. Um, so can you imagine you know, the amount of money that have been spent just to, to making sure that the industry will, uh, will stay afloat? Mm -hmm. Saying, uh, saying that, uh, 2021 is looking uh, quite good. Reservations are coming in, and there is a plan to start sailing again by, by spring 2021. You know, in, in general, the world has overcome a, a pandemic and crisis before. So I'm pretty sure that we're going um, gonna to go through this uh, as well, and uh, we'll come out just fine. I, I think uh, that you know, from, our, from our chair, from our side, we see this you know, little light at the end of the tunnel and, and, and the, you know, the future of cruising uh, is, still, is still bright. People love loves to vacationing, people love to, to cruise. So we're gonna get back there. Mm -hmm. No, 100%. I mean, it's one of the, it was one of the fastest growing industries. Uh, it was a, a big hype lately in terms of the, these massive cruises that you're saying. So uh, exactly as soon as the uh, health and the travel restrictions are lifted, then probably we'll go back to, to the, the way it was. And you will need yeah, talent in there. About, yeah. uh, we're talking about 170 billion with the B dollars of, uh, of uh, industry. I mean, it's a, and everything that is attached to it. 170 billion is a huge amount of money who wants to you know let go of that no no absolutely yeah. it's a, it is a very large industry mm -hmm. and i was saying that once you start um selling again hopefully uh, next year will be a, a big increase you're gonna need talent and uh, now so i like you with all your experience um to kind of pull talent in there so what will you uh, rec why will you recommend your industry to young people why will people want to join uh, that particular part of the hospitality industry? Well, first of all, I think that it's very important uh, to have uh, um, a very uh, open um, understanding of the hospitality industry. I think it's very important to know uh, what is good of a hospitality industry on land and what a hospitality industry at sea can actually give you. And then, if, you know, if you are uh, uh, smart enough to combine the two things together and the experience that you gain, you know, between the two worlds will make you a better, a better um, professional. Obviously, and I think it works uh, in both ways, um, if you've never been on, on board of a cruise line, it will take a little bit of time uh, to get your, uh, your, your bearing because it, it is a different world. Um, you know, we are wearing uh, uniform and stripe, uh, so there are ranks. And uh, although, you know, we are trying to, you know, to get rid of that, at least in the hospitality um, side of things, like we call in the hotel departments, uh, you will still, you still have a captain, you still have a chief engineer. And it, it is a little bit like to be on, on a sort of a military environment, you know, just, just to give you an idea. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the landscape is different, obviously, from one company to another, although there are, you know, po po political and logistical and overall uh, the corporate, uh, um, there are a lot of corporate similarities in the way is actually managed on land and, uh, and, um, and on, on, on ships. So uh, my suggestion is you need to uh, quickly decide um, who holds the power to navigate the company and the organization in a, in a safe way. Um, focus your attention on what's going on around you and above you, especially. Uh, by that, I mean, observe how work gets, gets done and organize, because that is extremely important. Be an active listener. Be an active listener, in my opinion, it's vital in, uh, in our environment. I mean, not just on ship, but in hospitality in general. 
and have a collaborative approach so you can actually improve uh, the day-to-day -day operation for the team that you're going to be part of and be very proactive in uh, um, resolving uh, problems. Also, as I was saying before, for me, brainstorming is very important and is a crucial uh, psychological, psychological advantage uh, over a traditional method. You know, you do, I told you to do that and you're doing that. You know, it, it doesn't work anymore. I think, you know, to have an open uh, relationship and discussion with your people, uh, it's, it's very, very important because you see different point of view and, you know, there is a lot of good information and ideas that comes from people that work with you. So why not to listen and take advantage of that? Um, I remember my on, on my you know on a previous company, they were you know forcing us in a good way to give them positive feedback or ideas in order to improve the brand and the product, and that's fantastic because you're going to be part of the of the operation. You're really going to feel part of the family, and that's important. Also, feedback is very important, um, and it's really. It, it meets a fundamental social need to exist and to earn or see in a dynamic team by the, the very nature that feedback will actually help you to grow. So that's my suggestion for um, everybody that would like to uh, decide to, you know, to follow on this career. Mm -hmm. And to join the industry it was a very nice lease. I mean, it can apply to every any job, but it's specifically for, for your uh, industry, nice list of of skills okay i was taking some notes when you were talking so you were saying that uh you were basically born and bred within hotels and the hospitality industry also uh family with sea captain so you have the mix from the beginning since childhood yeah. back in italy you follow your path which you saw very early you started with the kitchen moved the up the ranks in hotels in land and then you moved to the cruise liner industry uh you mentioned carlos Acero, your mentor and very nice phrases in there things are always in transition i really like yeah. it it's almost related to physics um <laughs> and then to asking about your uh, what what's important in your role you talk about the uh creating a, a very it's very important to create a very good first impression on all uh, guests coming on board to focus yeah. coordination within work uh, the job there is it's very very important talk about hawaii and, and polynesia and the importance the importance of tradition back in those islands uh, and then talking about the the skills needed to or for people for young people who might be considering joining the industry we're talking about the notes i've taken open understanding open mind uh, being aware of their surroundings being organized being active listeners being very proactive and um, bringing in new ideas and accepting feedback uh, which are all very important 170 billion industry which yeah. is hopefully Huge. recovering <laughs> very, very soon. <laughs> and people, I mean, it's, it's everywhere. Maybe business tra uh, travel uh, will, will take longer uh, to recover, but there's pent up demand for lesser. People want to enjoy, people want to have a good time. And as soon as they're allowed, um, the ones who really like cruise liners, they'll, they'll go back to it. Uh, any last thought, Angelo, from your side? Well, um... There is one thing that is really I really care about a lot, mm -hmm. and it's something that I I I kept doing it uh, even nowadays. Uh, since I was a, um, a junior uh, high student, together with the four other uh, classmates, we decided to go and visit uh, um, uh, elderly um, nursing homes. Uh, because they, you know we had one very close from uh, from our uh, from our college, and uh, you know the people over there said you know you know you know these people would like to to talk with also with young people they don't want to just stay amongst themselves, and um, so some of them did you know they were very lonely that they were without family you know that you know some stories to tell, um, so. Together with my friends, we, we went there and we sit with them and uh, we, we basically wanted to hear about their, uh, their life, about, uh, about their, uh, their story. And at the same time, uh, trying to bring uh, a little bit of joy and, uh, and, uh, and hope to, to these people. Um, and something that we actually find out 
that, you know, at the time we were very young. So, you know, when you're young, uh, maybe sometimes you're a little bit stiff and you think to know uh, about everything. But in reality, uh, there are a lot of things that you can learn from, uh, from senior people. It doesn't matter uh, from where they're coming from or which kind of uh, experience, professional experience they had. They always something to tell you. They're always a life story that can teach you something. So there is a lot of maturity there, of course. And you can really literally unwrap a full box of, of knowledge and fantastic story that, um, that really can give you um, uh, tremendous information. And at the same time, you help to keep their memories alive because their memories will, will pass uh, into you. So obviously you, with that, uh, you, you will realize at one point uh, um, that you will have a better understand uh, of the value of time and how time uh, changes, uh, changes all, uh, all of us, um, you know, literally day by day. So that's, that's the kind of, uh, of uh, uh, lesson we, we got visiting uh, um, these old uh, people. Mm -hmm. Which is very powerful, yeah bringing joy and hope to them, you were saying, and unwrapping their knowledge. That, that's very interesting. And I really like what you said, this last thing, that the fact that, you know, if they don't pass their knowledge and their stories, they will die with them. Yeah. So by passing the knowledge, it just keeps going through generations. You know, that's very, very important. Linking to what you were saying before about the how important traditions are for, for those islands you, you love to visit, yeah? Yeah. The importance of, of passing the stories through history. Mm -hmm. Nice one. Nice, nice message to... To end. Okay, Angelo, thank you very much for your time. It's been very insightful. I was taking loads of notes, which I'll then put uh, when I post the, the video on the podcast. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Okay, So hopefully you'll be sailing very, very soon. Pablo, it was a pleasure for me as well. And, uh, you know, uh, let's keep in touch. Oh, there is one more thing that I would like, I'd like to say, if you don't Please. mind. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very a, a nice uh, uh, website, which is called The Growth Works. World. So... That is very important because for all the junior uh, hotelier or the junior hospitality um, students that they would like to uh, be mentoring or to enter a mentoring program, uh, James Lemon is really uh, give you everything for free, literally. And there is a lot of people like myself and other people that loves to uh, share information, to pass on information, uh, give guidelines. So if anybody is actually interested, I'm sure Pablo, you can put it on your uh, on your message, and uh, you know it's a great help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you 100. percent Yeah, he's doing a great labor, James yourself and all the people collaborating in there. The growth works. I'll put the link, of course. Yeah, but I post it on LinkedIn on the website so that whoever you know, especially it's focused for young people, as you're saying, looking for advice, maybe a bit lost or not knowing what to do, what to do in the career. So there's a lot of uh, very seasoned professionals in there helping for free, all of them, just giving their time and advice and knowledge to, to the people who, who are looking for it. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for sharing it. Okay. Well, all thanks right. again. <laughs> Stay Thank well. You, Pablo. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. That was all for now. Hope you found it useful.